Hey gang, we are standing at ground zero of a neighborhood where a neighborhood that is actually built over a cemetery, an old, old cemetery. And as you can see here, this is, well, it was called the Court Street Cemetery. It was built back, well, I started it in 1875. And I gotta give a shout out to Chrissy in comments who suggested this story, said, hey, you should come down here and check this out. And I'm glad I did. And actually, I got a lot of my reference material from a video from the Arizona Archaeological and Historical Society. They had a lecturer there that was pretty good, an archaeologist who did a lot of research in this area. So I'm going to share a lot of interesting things, a lot of it from that. So credit to them. I'll put the link below. Everybody should go check that uh, that episode, that video, that lecture out. I was pretty impressed. But yeah, 1875. And look at these signs here. This is, like I said, ground zero. Where this cemetery was. Now, this area here is bounded by... I'm going to say it's about six blocks in one direction and maybe two blocks or so another direction so it's a pretty large area a pretty large area that it covered what happened was they ended up relocating the cemetery back in 1909 now there's a couple of famous people that were here I don't know if you remember Frank Stilwell from the Tombstone Days, Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday. There was Bob Paul. He was buried here. His famous lawman. Actually, he was on the stage as Shotgun Messenger with Bud Philpot, the Benson stage. That was robbed by those four guys. And he actually, you know, was in, a lawman in Tucson here. He's the one who here arrested Pearl Hart, the bandit queen, held her in the jail here in Tucson. He was buried at the cemetery. Now, the cemetery was relocated and the records, they really didn't have almost any records. Very sad. So we're going to talk about this. Those guys, no one knows where they're buried because what happened was they moved everybody in 1909. Well, in 1909, the business people got together here and they said uh, oh look at our little friend here they said we want to get this cemetery out of here it's too close to the businesses it's too close to the center of town and we need to move it and what they did is they ended up moving the cemetery to the big cemeteries here now we've done three episodes here at Evergreen and they moved it to Evergreen and said oh Evergreen is just the place because actually it's on a floodplain and a lot of trees can grow there naturally so it was a great spot we talked everybody into it and in 1915 they started moving the graves charging 50 bucks it was a, a 50 bucks a grave to disinter and move them over there quite a money-making little enterprise that turned out to be so, a lot of bodies moved. Of course, a lot of families came and said, we want to move our loved ones. But, you know, there were eight to 9,000 people buried there. There's going to be, gosh, probably, I'm going to say a third of them. They didn't have families. They didn't have loved ones to come get them. There were a lot of the people, well, I think it was two thirds Hispanic, one third European, and then a mix, you know, Native American and all kinds of other races. But there were a lot of single men who came to this area and, you know, gold rush days, but a lot of the, the people had this, the tuberculosis like Doc Holliday were coming out west for the cure and they died out here. 
single men, a lot of single men, they had no family to get them. So what I'm saying is a lot of bodies were not taken out and everyone pretty much commonly knows here, published that there's a lot of bodies still here. Some of the homes, you know, like this, they say there's 90 to 100 bodies buried right here, right where we're walking. We're walking on graves and we don't even know it. It's quite chilling. I don't think I could live in a neighborhood like this, but I'm sure the property, the property values are lower. It's more affordable for that reason. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. The archeology span here was fascinating. I mean, between, since 1949, they found unintentionally 50 some graves to since 2005, over 20 more graves have been found. In 2012, there were 11 graves found here. They were putting a new sewer pipe in. And just in that one little spot, they found 11 graves lining the area where they were digging for the pipe. Yeah. At the time, you know, just to give you a feel, if you live to be 10 years old, your life expectancy would be 44 years old. Again, if you live till 10. If you live till 20, you typically would live till you're 47. And on average, if you live till you were 30 years old, you could expect to make it to 55 to 56 years old. So people didn't have a long life expectancy and that's because of diseases and just that's how long people lived back then. They found a lot of interesting artifacts here. You know, just imagine down here, if we were to dig, you would find wooden coffins, what would be left of them. Again, it's dry, unlike, you know, in the, in the east, the northeast, the Midwest coffins disintegrate we've talked about that but you can just imagine they found things like well personal possessions like coins purses combs rosaries pocket knives other things and they found some beautiful plaques they also found lift handles you know bits and pieces of the wooden coffins you watch that video that I'm talking about from the Arizona Archaeology and Historical Society, you can see pictures of a child's coffin, the decorative elements on it, and many other interesting things. There are, right in this neighborhood here, as we look around, there's some 80 houses. There's a hotel. I think it's a Best Western hotel and they're all sitting on bodies. How many do you think would be here? You know, maybe a thousand, maybe 2000, probably. I mean, the unclaimed bodies, they're not gonna dig them up. Now, I want you to imagine for a second if you came here and you bought a house and maybe you knew, maybe you didn't know, but there's a guy who lives right up here and this is published, you know, it's, it's not like I'm, we're gonna go by his house. He did a big article and published his story, Moses Thompson. I don't know if he still lives here, I think he does, but he was, listen to this, he was out in front of his house and overnight he, he noticed there was a, a big sinkhole. And he said, wow, what's this? And he got a shovel and he started digging a little bit, poking around, trying to see, was this a sewer line that broke or what happened here? And 
reaches his hand in, pulls out bones. Now it turns out those bones were from a two to four year old child, Hispanic child. They don't know if it was a boy or a girl. And under that, and they found pieces of the coffin, under that was the father who was about 30 years old. So the forensics on that, they determined they probably died of cholera or one of the diseases. They probably, you know, they died together near the same time within days probably. So yeah, he found those bones and you know, and people aren't like digging around here. This is just thought from situations that have happened to, you know, the sewer thing or a sinkhole, which is gonna be very rare. But this house is right up here. And what he did, very interestingly and very respectfully, you gotta give this guy a lot of credit. A lot of dogs here, which is cool. Is he built a grotto where this happened? So I'm gonna show you right where it happened. Look at a little tree house here for the kids. How cool is that? So yeah, look at this. Isn't this great? He built that in memory of them. Very cool. And you can see there's candles. I'm sure they light, I think on the anniversary of maybe when they found it, but I don't know. Just, uh, it would be just so strange to be here and live here. And then you walk out your front door and you see that. Uh-oh. Hey there. Looks like a cool lab. Hi. Hey, buddy. How are you? Hello. Oh, we love our labs, don't we, huh? Hello. Oh, you love the lab. Are you a good boy? Or a good girl, look at those paws. You got those big paws. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, this is a nice area here. Very cool. Yeah, so I wonder if he still lives here. Maybe he'll come out and I can interview him. Like I said, he did the big story, so it's nothing, you know, not a big... I'm not doing anything that's giving away his privacy that hasn't been already consensually shown. So anyway, you know, I did some digging and I was looking for ghost stories and I'm sure there are some, but I couldn't find any. Deb and we were doing some digging, but I got to tell you something. I think they're going to find more skeletons here. <laughs> It's probably going to just keep happening. I mean, think about it. One or 2,000 people, graves are spread out through here. So, all right, that's it for now. I'm heading out, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy Halloween.